In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can create a entry form for a database in Excel and how to even create a separate sheet to, to populate that database within Excel. So there'll be a lot of people who will tell you that you can't use Excel for as, as a database, but as long as you're not populating with millions of rows, it can work for that purpose, especially if you don't have a huge uh, chunk of data that you wanna track. So in my example, I'm gonna use um, a sales entry form. So let's say we've got sales that we wanna track, uh, perhaps commission by, by different reps to calculate. So I'm gonna create a simple sales entry form. So create my title here, and I'm gonna create a, a few fields such as sales rep, store, date, product, and then the sale amount. And I'm gonna clear, clear these grid lines just to make it a bit cleaner. So under the view tab, uncheck grid lines. And now what I'm gonna do is create some grid lines here just to make it clear that these are places where someone can enter in values and spread my header across here. And so I've got my fields, I've got my values. What I'm also gonna do is add a button right now. It doesn't do anything yet, but I'm gonna go through shapes and add this rounded uh, rectangle, add it in here and right click, edit text. And I'm gonna say post data and let's bold this center it make it nice and large so it's clear that's what it does so right now it doesn't do anything clicking on this is not going to do anything because I, I still need to attach a macro to this so i'm going to zoom in to make my form easy to easy to read and so i'm going to call this my my input sheet this is where i'm going to enter data the idea being you enter this in click this button and it's going to populate on another tab, which I'm going to call database. And so the goal here is once I hit that post data button, it's going to post my, my entries into this sheet and add to it over time. So I'm going to go back to my input tab and I'm going to copy these fields, right click copy, and then I'm going to transpose them by right clicking paste special values and transpose. So I'll flip them across. So now I've got my headers. So I'm just gonna stretch these out just so there's plenty of space here. Highlight them and there we go. So I've got my headers. My database is really ready to go. The only thing to do now is now to create that macro to actually copy these values over to that database. So it's gonna do a couple things. It's gonna find the next available line. And then when I when I click the post data button, it's gonna copy everything over. So in order to do this, I'm gonna open up Visual Basic. I'm gonna to go to the developer tab, launch Visual Basic, and I'm gonna insert a new module and get ready on creating my macro. So I'm gonna start by creating a sub-procedure called copy inputs. And I'm gonna create some variables. So one for the cell, set it as a range for next row to calculate what the, what the next row is in my database. And I'm gonna set up some worksheet variables. So WS input as a worksheet, WS database as a worksheet for my database. What I'm also gonna to need to do now is set those worksheet variables so I'm gonna put a comment here just to make it clear what I'm doing. And I'm gonna say set the worksheet input equal to my input tab and set the worksheet database variable equal to my database tab. So I've got that in there. Next thing I'm gonna do is detect the next available row based on the values in column column A. So to do that, I'm gonna set next row equal to, and I'm gonna use the count A function in Excel and to access that in VBA, I'm gonna use the worksheet function, function dot count A. And in that worksheet database uh, sheet, I'm gonna look at range A, all of column A, and I'm gonna add a plus one to that. So that way it counts the number of values in column A 
and jumps ahead by one because otherwise I, I, I don't otherwise it would um, override whatever whatever's in that last row. Now that I've got that set up, the next thing I can do is start copying over my values. So on the input page, so if I look at back to my sheet here, I've got my inputs in cell C4 through to C8. So I'm gonna jump back into here and say cell C4, copy, and then to paste it, the destination we can set right here. So we don't have to do this in multiple steps. We can do this all in one line. So worksheet database dot range, and it's going to be in column A because it was the first header that I set up. And then we use next row. So it's automatically going to take that that value that I've calculated here, that next row, and that's it. I'm just going to leave a note here to say copy the sales rep, and they'll go to the next line. Say WS input dot range now let's go c5 copy ws database and this time it's going to be column b and this is to copy the store value and then same thing for it c6 and that is going to copy into column c next row and i'm going to copy the date value Next up, we've got input range C7. And copy that into column column D. And let's just double check what that was. So that was the product, and then we've got the sale amount. So I'm going to say copy the product. And I'm just going to adjust my comments here just so they're consistent. And then lastly, we've got the sale amount. So input range C8. And this one's going to go into column E. Copy the sale amount. And what also add at the end is a message box to say that it was posted. Just so I get a confirmation that it's been copied over successfully and the data is in there. So now let's go back into, into my sheet here. And now that I've got that macro created, I can assign it to this button. So I'm going to right click, assign macro. And I've got my copy inputs sub procedure there. I'm going to hit OK. So now what will happen is once I fill in this data and click post at it, it's going to update it. So if I type in, let's say, rep A from store A, and let's say January 1, 2024, they sold a sweater for $25. Now, one thing I can do is obviously add some formatting here, center this, let's put this as a currency value, perhaps change this date format. There we go. And now, ready to go, hit the post data button. And here I forgot to make this change to worksheets. There we go. Let's try that one more time. There we go. So I posted it over, go to the database tab. And so there it is, Rep A, Store A, January 1, sweater, $25. So let's test this uh, by adding another one. So let's change this to Rep B. Store B, and let's say that was January 5th, 2024. And this time the sweater is $30. Hit the post data button again. Now it's posted. Go back in here. There we go. So it's adding to my to my database. So it's building off of that. Now there might be some additional things you want to add to this macro. Like right now, it's not clearing these values after you're you're entering them. It's it's keeping them in there. So I can go to the developer tab, go back in here, and then just before I get my posted message, I can select WS input dot range and let's select C4 to C8 and dot clear contents. And so that way it'll clear it off just before I get that posted message. So now if I go back into here, hit my post button, now it'll clear it off and then I get my message so I can start fresh with the next form. Go back in here, it's posted that value again. So I can remove this from here manually just like you would any other um, Excel a worksheet, just right click delete. And remember, it's automatically going to count um, the number of, of rows. So as long as I'm not leaving, you know, weird gaps along the way where I've got, you know, something like this, then, then it's fine to delete the values because it's just going to count them and go to the next row. So as long as you, your, your data set is, is clean and you're not 
doing things like that with it, then it'll then it'll be fine. As long as when you go to delete, you delete the entire row so that everything adjusts and that the macro um, can just look at the, the, the number of cells in column A. Like right now, it's counting that there's gonna be three cells in here, so it's gonna jump to row four. So as long as that logic is is fine and sound, then then the macro will continue to add to to this properly and it won't override any data. Now what we could also do is adjust our macro uh, to make sure that we also don't have blank data populating as well. So if I go back into the developer tab, I could say, okay, before we copy over the values, let's check to make sure that we've actually entered a sales rep. So I can say, okay, if ws input dot range c4 is equal to blank, so in other words, nothing's in there, then what I can say, okay, message box, please enter a enter a sales rep, and then I'm gonna exit the sub procedure. So that means the macro will not will not continue. It's gonna check C4, it's gonna say, okay, that's blank. So it's gonna pop up that message and it's gonna exit this entire sub procedure. So let's try to enter this without a sales rep. So I'll enter um, store X, let's do January 31st, 2024. Product, let's do um, a t-shirt for $15. Well, let's try to post this. So please enter a sales rep. So it's not going any further. If I go on to here, it has not posted that. But now let's say it's supposed to be rep C. Now when I go back to post it, now post it successfully. So you can create those rules for any sort of required fields that you want to track um, just to prevent any sort of um, sort of issues like that. So that's how we can add a bit more control to the form and um, make it a bit more, um, re reduce the likelihood of, of errors. This may not be perfect, but we can we can set it up this way to to ensure that we've got the values set up properly. What we could also do for the inputs is if we had a drop down list for the sales reps. So if we went to data data validation and we had a we had a list, so we could populate a list of sales reps that we had to make that. That's another way we could cut down on the data entry errors. Um, but with, with VBA, we can set it so that before we click the post data button, we can do some checks like that to make sure, okay, is this, uh, are, are these fields blanks? Or is this more, yeah. is, this a, is this a value? Is it more than zero? Things like that. So there's additional error handling we can do to make sure that uh, our, our data is relatively clean going into our, our database. But worst case scenario, you can always delete it. If, if it is incorrect, I mean, obviously we can adjust it if some, something um, needs to be corrected. But as you can see with Excel, it doesn't take a whole lot to, to set up a simple database and a database entry form in Excel to be able to start populating your list. So if you've got something really simple that you want to track and you don't want to shell out thousands of dollars for uh, a database software or anything like that, you know, Excel can be your, your go-to option in that case. Um, cause like I said, although it may not be ideal in, in very large data sets, you know, if you're dealing with hundreds or even thousands of rows, it could still work as long as you know, the limitations of it, you know, you may want to archive it if it gets too big, things like that, but it can definitely do the job for you, especially on a smaller scale. And with the help of macros, you know, you can create a clean sales entry form on one page, press a button where it populates for you on another page. So if you had users populating, populating the data, you could have this database tab hidden and they just have the input screen and post the data into there. So that's a wrap for this video. If you did like it, please make sure to leave a like and make sure to subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.